I had a chinwag with Mike Numb, the man behind or inside Nine Quinn. That's not right. Oh. Mike Quinn, Nine Numb. <laughs> I spoke to the human version of a Sullustan backstage at Burnley's Star Wars Fan Fun Day. Subjects included his various roles in the OT, the real world language that Nine speaks in, and his return to the sequel trilogy, VST. But first, I'd like to thank Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. This is one of the most ambitious mobile RPG projects of 2019, and I haven't stopped playing it. Mostly because I'm lonely and have no friends. But also because it's free and I like free stuff. It's also got a great storyline, epic duels, PvP battles, and I personally enjoy fighting against other live players. And with its surprisingly detailed 3D graphics, it can definitely be compared with the biggest PC and console titles. There's hundreds of champions to collect and customize, choosing their artifacts, and creating a unique mastery build for each of them. And from 300,000 reviews, it has almost a perfect score on the Play Store. There's a rewards program for new players with a new daily login reward for the first 90 days in the game. And the highly anticipated new Faction Wars feature is now live. So click on the unique links in the description and you'll get free 50,000 silver and an epic champion as part of the new player program. Over 10 million players worldwide have already downloaded the game in less than 6 months. And you could be one of them. But you'll always be more than a number to me. Let's get on with the interview. First and foremost, I actually started out as a puppeteer, yeah, a puppeteer puppet builder, because I was obsessed with Muppets and Muppet Show in the late 70s. You know, I was a teenager and, and it was the best thing ever at that time for me. So I wanted to know how to build puppets and design them and how were they made, how were they performed, how did these guys work this stuff? You know, it was so out there compared to what we were used to. So I kind of obsessed a little bit about that. So presumably then, from an early age, Jim Henson was a bit of a, uh, an idol. Before. Oh, very much so, yeah. He was the man, I mean, yeah. And then you yeah. got to work with him, what was that like? Eventually, yeah. Well, I met him when I was uh, 13 and then 15, and then finally got to work with him when I was 16. Initially, I was hired, I think, just for like the week as a background puppeteer for them, but without any training, you know, no skills, no training. Mind-blowing, really. How on earth do you get to work with your idol mm. Um, just like that, straight out of school, you know. But that's that's who Jim was, though. You know, he was like that. He um, he sort of had a way of of uh, bringing the best out of everyone and he, and seeing potential in people. So yes. am I right in saying that you were actually when you got called on to Star Wars, you were actually already working on the Dark Crystal? Kind of Pretty much, time, yeah. Right? Um, because uh, yeah, everything at that time, all all the things I'd worked on were at Elstree Studios film studio so we did the great Muppet caper and Dark Crystal as a it was like a two picture deal with Lou Grade who did the Muppet show uh, but then the next film in the studio was a re Revenge of the Jedi at the time yeah and um, so and of course Henson and Lucas were buddies of course anyway and you know with Yoda and everything else yep. so we were already trained up so I was lucky in that I was there and they needed someone, and uh, I just went in and had an interview with uh, Robert Watts, the producer mm -hmm. in his office, and, and no audition, and that was it. I didn't even know what I was going to be performing at the time. I suppose you're most um, associated with uh, Nine Numb. Yeah, course, but he, he but didn't he, exist at the time. No, so, you did yeah. a lot more than him anyway, didn't you? You, you were involved with Yoda <clears> as well? Yeah, I started out really helping. You sort of, I was, um, Tim Rose was doing Akbar and Snootles, and so we rehearsed those first, the two of us, uh, on stage eight, I think it was, where Jabba's Palace ended up happening. And that was our first big creature scene. It was 1982, and I also did Reese, the, the hand puppet version mm -hmm. of him, for close-ups. So Yoda came along later, and so did Nine Num, and the baby Ewok and all those things, just because I was there, and I guess, you know... Why do um, you think it's Nine Num, though, that people kind of... Into you, you hear at a convention, it's nine yeah. numb of your head in terms of the picture. Yeah, of absolutely. Why do you think it is? Um, a lot of reasons. I mean, he just looks great. So I knew the voice was going to be replaced later, just like the. So it wasn't Jabber you in post-production. No, no, no. And here's the thing. So, so, um, but they didn't know what it was going to be. So, um, so what, what, uh, what, what, what I did was I just figured out what he would say in real life because I've got to act it and it's got to have the intent and make sense and, and, the, and the timing and you know the emotion in the visuals so I wrote down what I thought he was saying you know, penciled it in the script and George was directing uh, that, that, those scenes because they were running a bit behind uh, Richard Marquand was directing the Rancor uh, pit on another stage so George did double duty and directed the, the cockpit scenes 
So I just uh, showed him the script and said, you know, is it okay if I say this, please? And he just kind of looked at it and what, read it all and just looked up and said, yeah, that'll be fine. What, was it? what did you say? <laughs> oh, things like, you know, the TIE fighters up ahead, we're not getting a reading on the shield. You, just went, you went old school, normal, you went English. It's normal, yeah, well, of course, oh. we're, because Lando needs to know what True. I'm saying. True, Billy's, Billy's going to know. Why, yeah. you know, everything has to have intent and meaning. And so, where, sorry, where were you in this scene? Because what I've seen pictures of the new Nine Numb and it yeah. looks to me like you're in the outfit. New Numb. New num, new yes, num, new yeah. num. The new num, but was it a puppet back then? It was, yeah. It was, right. a, it was a, like a big muppet, a hand so puppet. So where were you? Because that cockpit looks small. Yeah, it was. Yeah, um, they had to cut out the bottom of the seat uh, yeah. with the steel struts and things in that uh, because I had to lay flat on my back basically. Um, and it was like a 1973 race car seat, apparently. So it was kind of, and they were like nervous about cutting it up because they couldn't get any more or whatever. And are you sure we've got to do this? Yeah, sorry. So, um, yeah, and it was all on a gimbal, so I couldn't stand to roll in the floor or anything because of the, the mechanism underneath. So, so, yeah, they just put down furniture pads, I laid on them, I had a little monitor to see the cameras uh, on my chest, a mic like this, and, uh, and Phil Tippett would lower the puppet onto me through the window, you know, and I'd, I had my hand in one of his hands and then my other hand in his head, my mm -hmm. left hand, and then his left hand was was a fake arm uh, fixed to the yoke, the steering yoke. And then uh, Simon Williamson and Tim Rose did cable controls for the eye blinks and ear wiggles. It's amazing. And that's how we did it. How many people are involved with yeah. one character? In, in yeah. a way, here's you signing and taking all the glory, but it wasn't just Some about of it. you. And then, and then you, yeah, and, exactly, and the other thing is, which you brought up earlier, was um, at that time, you know, so they have their guide voice, they've got all the pictures, but they don't have a, a, an alien voice yet. So that's where Ben Burke came in, of course, the great Ben Burke. Mm. And we, I discussed this with him a few years later, or a few years ago, and he was saying, you know, he felt it was great because he could tell even visually, you know, whether I was excited or, or concerned or whatever, you know. So the clues were visual as well as what the guide track I put down. But they had a, a, an, an intern working at Skywalker Ranch who um, was Kenyan. And so he just had him record a bunch of stuff so, so Nightmare is actually speaking a, a, a dialect of Kenyan. Okay. For real. So he was really big in Kenya. Yeah, huge so in like, Kenya. So like Lupita uh, grew up watching him and, you know, she was a big fan of his. So he's, yeah, a, he's a hero in Kenya. Yeah. They've been using the same guy ever since. You know, they found him again in, right. like a month before The Force Awakens. So he must opened. have been surprised to be called back. Yeah, Were you I'm surprised sure. to be I called back? As Nine Numb, once again? I wasn't surprised because I was actively seeking it out. Right, okay. You were asking the question, yeah? <laughs> yeah, it's like, I want to work on the... I wanted to do Nine Numb in the prequels, you know, and that never happened. Were you so. surprised to hear the answer yes? No, no, because it's like, I have to do this. You can't have anyone else. I was more relieved than anything and excited, not surprised. Yeah, you know. Um, but it was a costume this time as opposed to... Yeah, the, yeah. this time I, I'm looking through his eyes and he's got so, micro servos in his face and that kind of thing. So I get to walk around. I have legs wow. and I can, I can run and I can trip over things and I can fall over in Just the middle of a tank. Just scenes now, don't I you? I can do my own stunts. It's fantastic. I have so much power. Unbelievable. Yeah, isn't I'm it? feeling the power. It's Just great. Being in your presence. It's fun. It's fun. Thank you for watching and look out for part two of my interview with Mike, where he talks about his animation career working on the likes of Toy Story 2 and Attack of the Clones. Did you do this because you saw the shift in the way the industry was going and maybe were you sort of worried that practical effects and puppetry's days were numbered? And we discuss his forthcoming autobiography, Talk to the Hand. Here's Lando. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, Jamie Stangrel told me to do this because he's a ridiculous human being, which I've discovered in a matter of a few minutes.